Hi guys, Graham Armstrong, off for the young team here. Former pupil at Coatbridge High School as well. A very proud pupil, former pupil. So thank you for asking me to come back and speak to you about dialect and the young team. Um, also thank you for those of you who have read it. Um, I had no idea when I was sitting where you are that I would be writing books, you know, that would be read in my old school. So it's a, a real privilege. So thank you very much. Um, and we we're just going to talk about dialect today, one specific thing, and it's a, it's a big one, and it's an important part of the young team. And your teacher's given me a few questions, so we're just going to answer them as if I've done a interview. Um, so he said, why was it important for you to use the local dialect, or why did you use the local dialect, or why would you use the local dialect? And I like to turn that question around, it's one I get asked quite a bit, and I like to turn it around and say, why wouldn't I use the local dialect, you know? Um, and I think the answers become more obvious when you ask that. Stigma about working class culture. I mean, the book was published by Picador in London. Uh, London publishing is very reluctant sometimes to publish Scottish books, especially Scottish books written in Scottish dialect. Um, the, you know, it was rejected 300 times over six years. It took a long, long time to publish this book. It was very hard work. It nearly, nearly killed me on occasion. But the, the reality for that is because London publishing has a lack of diversity. It's got one um, main predominant profile of voice, and that is white, upper class and middle class people. And um, for, obviously for towns like Yardin Coat Bridge, um, we are a predominantly working class community, so there is judgment there. There's low value judgments attached to voice. And people assume that if you speak with an accent, like obviously I do and, and we do in this part of the world and other parts of the country as well, Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, that there's less worth in your words, you know. And this is one of the reasons why the BBC News famously used received pronunciation, which is basically a fancy way of saying standard English. They speak posh on the news. Um, so if, if it's that difficult to... Um, to get a book published in dialect, why do people bother? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked. Social realism is the genre that the young team belongs to. And what social realism means is basically it concerns itself with societal issues. So poverty, hardship, drugs, violence, gangs, mental health and, and working class issues. And I've come to think of that as a mirror, just held up to capture a moment, a culture, a time, you know, Obviously, the moment I'm trying to capture was the gang culture in um, Airdrie and Coat Bridge in the early 2000s. And um, the, the people who signed this book weren't running about with Mera Peaks and drinking Buckfast. You know, they were posh people in London, so I had to convince them um, that this was a book worth um, being published, you know, and published well. But the actual truth of the matter is, when it comes to voice, is that we, the, the language we speak that our mums and dads tell us not to speak in case we don't get the job, when we go for a job interview, or, you know, to be polite and say, oh, it's no, no, it's no, it's no, I, it's yes. Um, we're actually speaking a hybrid language that's developed over thousands of years in Scotland, you know, and we Scots originally spoke Gaelic, you know, and then that became Anglicised, which means Anglified, you know, and then it got Airdrie and Coat Bridgeified, you know. And um, that, that kind of language shift happened over many, many years. And the language we speak now um, in Scotland, obviously, is English, but it's English with a Scottish twist. Um, and it's called Central Scots. I didn't know that until recently, actually. It was a bit of a revelation. Um, Central Scots. And then up north, they speak a more, um, you know, they would call us Ouija's and we would call them Chuchters, you know, and the Chuchters language, you can what I mean and all that. That's just a different version and variant of Scottish language, you know, and obviously then combined with the, the Central Scots, you get the Glasgow Patter, which is obviously what we talk, you know, and uh, your humour and idioms and all that, sayings, that all comes into it, you know what I mean? So it becomes quite a complicated package. Um, but the, um, the most obvious reason for me, obviously, you know, I'm proud to be Scottish, I'm proud of where I come from, proud of Airdrie and Coat Bridge. And uh, the most obvious reason for me to use dialect was to represent the community. Um, and the, you know, language is, is excluded. Our language gets excluded. Um, and we're underrepresented in this part of the world. You know, I can't think of any other books set in Airdrie, apart from maybe one. You know, that's, um, that's become a, a literary novel of standing, you know, that gets spoken about regularly, you know. 
Um, and people, when you speak to them in their own voice through a, a book or a film or, or an audio book, um, people identify with it because it's the way we talk, you know, it's the way we talk to our families, the way we talk to our friends, it's the way we think inside our own head and our internal voice. You know, and it, it builds worth in people, you know, and it, it certainly built worth in me when I read other voices that were like me, like, you know, famous writers like James Kelman and Tom Leonard, who were great advocates of the way we speak, you know, um, and for, you know, trying to capture the moment of the madness of gangs in, in near Drink Coat Bridge back then, it was, it was essential, you know, as a tool to connect with the audience that I was trying to reach, which is young men predominantly. Um, who we live that life, you know, and who are currently living that life in different forms, you know. Um, the next question was, how has it been received by a global audience? And uh, pretty well, you know, I think um, lots of people read The Young Team that are not just from the west of Scotland. Um, and it's good to, to understand how they manage it. You know, people sometimes say, oh God, if you were foreign or you're American or Canadian, you'll never be able to read this. But I know for a fact Americans and Canadians have read the book. Um, and they figure it out by context. So they, if they don't understand a word, they look at the words on either side of the word and they kind of work it out. It's kind of like if we were reading Shakespeare. You know, we don't walk about in the playground or, you know, in, in our towns talking about uh, Shakespeare in English. But we kind of work it out, you know. Um, and there's a science behind all that called linguistics and I uh, inadvertently signed up for a class in that and it was very difficult. I could not get my head around it at all. It was, it was very complicated but I've learned a couple of words from it that are actually quite useful and it's probably above what you need to know but I'm going to tell you anyway because I was quite proud of myself for remembering. Um, there's three words, lexicon, a morpheme and syntax. That's the three building blocks of language that we that we know. The lexicon is all the words put together, so it's the exhaustive list of all the language. And obviously, when you're writing dialect, you make a language up because you're making up patter. So we've got a new lexicon. That's the bank of all the words, right? And uh, the, the fancy word for word is a morpheme. That's just a block of sound that means something. You know, like that's a water bottle, signified and signifier. That's some that's some smart stuff by the way. Right? Morphemes. So we've got a lexicon full of morphemes, that's the word bank full of words, right? And all that is gelled together with a language system we call syntax, right? And that is all you need to know. That's as geeky as it gets, right? Um and it's important for me to know these words, right? Because one of the kind of the pushbacks I get often when people talk about dialect is people fit down south and they say, could they understand it, mate? Sorry. Um and and you know Proper people say that as well, you know, people in the publishing world, their, their dialect was too difficult. And it's good to know that the syntax in the book, right, so the way the words are put together, gelled together, right, is exactly the same as English. It doesn't change at all, actually, you know. Um, and just like when you're learning a foreign language, it's the, it's the grammar, the syntax, that's how you learn foreign languages, you know, and then the, the vocabulary and all the rest of it. Um, so I, I think oftentimes, you know, it actually was not about comprehension. They could understand it, they just didn't really want to, you know, and that, that's where the class thing comes in, you know. Um, and why analysis like that is useful, right? Um, because it's not like Enigma code, guys, do you know what I mean? It's not like something that, you know, they can't understand. It's just that there's an unwillingness to understand. And then that brings us into talking about class issues, right? About worth, about value, about why people don't really want to understand, you know, rather than don't understand. And that's important to remember. Um, but aye, the words don't change that much, guys, for English. You know, like, do becomes day and to becomes tay and from becomes fe and ball head becomes ball head and, you know what I mean? Um, it's not an undeciphered language system, which is what we used to call the, the like hieroglyphics and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but that is really the heart of the criticism, guys. So, um, but otherwise, I mean, the book has been translated into Italian and Spanish, and I sometimes get Italian people messaging me saying that they loved a specific word or line in the book. That's exactly it's exactly the same, you know, as the English. So it, it does work in other places. And there's certain words that, and obviously phrases in some of the Glasgow part that doesn't quite transfer. Um, and that's where the phrase lost in translation comes from, if you've ever heard that. Um, but I, and I'm actually part Italian, believe it or not. Uh, my granny was Italian and I've got loads of family out there and I'm trying to learn to speak Italian now. Um, so I'm going to say, Sto imparando ma lentamente, grazie mille, ciao. Which just means I'm learning but slowly, thank you, goodbye. Um... The third and final question 
as you might be relieved to hear, is what did dialect bring to the story? Um, guys, dialect brings a deep cultural respect, you know. Um, of course, I think young team gang culture in Neds in the noughties was worthy of writing about for seven, for ten years actually, um, because I did it, you know. And uh, the book has been well received, it's been met with acclaim, it's gone on to be a Times bestseller, it's been adapted for television. Um, the voice that I speak with has become a product, you know, people like to hear my voice, they invite me on radio, I've just presented a TV show about rave culture, it's still on uh, iPlayer if you're interested, Scott on the Rave, if you're allowed to watch that. Um, you know, and people enjoy to hear the way we speak, you know. Um, and that's why I don't change my voice. You'll hear some people and they'll talk like their mates in the pub and then when they go on the BBC or an interview, they talk like, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, and that's just because of social pressure, you know, to speak in a certain way or they think they're going to be, you know, not uh, thought of highly if they don't, if they speak like us, you know, common people, you know. Um, but be proud of where you're from. I'm very proud of where I'm from. Very proud to be from Airdrie, you know, and be schooled in Cobridge. Um, you know, and the the, the achievements of the book and, and other offers, you know, they're breaking barriers. Um, and it's given me amazing opportunities from being authentic, you know, um, on the page to being an authentic person out there. Um, one of the real privileges of all this journey, guys, has been to go take into schools and talk about gang culture uh, and try and help young guys take the, the, the positive road, you know, for the lived experience. And that's how I turn my life around, you know. Um, and also going into, into prisons, you know, to, to talk to men who are, are serving sentences. And uh, some of these guys have never been to school. They've never um, read books. You know, they didn't have books in their home. Young people, for the other part of the world, who lived the life we led, tend not to read books. There's an anti-intellectualism. You don't want to be the brainy guy, you know. But um, oftentimes that, that, that study and that pursuing something else takes you to a different place, a better place, you know, than you were, and that's what happened with my life. Um, but many of these men in prison system in HMP Berlin and Shorts have fed back to me that um, they, they felt like it was just a mate telling them a story, you know, they didn't feel judged by the language. So for, in terms of access and taking the book into difficult places like that, you know, is, is absolutely essential. I'm very glad that the dialect worked well like that. It almost um, sounds like their pal telling them a story rather than, you know, a, a, a learning book, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, to be, to be able to affect change in people's lives is very, very um, important to me. And, um, you know, I've, I've created an artistic portrait in this book of what, what life was like back then. Um, you know, and, and worryingly, we're going back in some ways to that. You know, there's certain things that these messages, albeit it was set in the 2000s, are just as applicable now. Um, you know, in the language and the, the craft of the book was how I um, got to tell that story and got to connect with people. So the stuff you learn in school and the stuff that I didn't, I wasn't interested in back then became very important in my life later on. Um, and English and the written word, of course, is important for whatever you're doing because, you know, we communicate by language, you know, we communicate on computers, we communicate via letters, we communicate ourselves and, you know, we big ourselves up to jobs and you know, universities and colleges by writing stuff, you know, so um, it's, it's, it's a great skill to have um, and something to master, you know, and something to cherish, you know, because the words that you speak um, and the words that you write are yours, you know, they belong to you, they become tangible when you write them down, so um, if you've ever thought about writing them down, I would, I would highly recommend it. Um, and guys, it's... Um, you know, I think that the young team has been a, a great success because it's connected with people in this community predominantly. And I, uh, I recorded the audio book for the young team as well. And that helped a lot of young guys access the book who wouldn't maybe read a book. And it became, when you when you read words that you've written aloud, it becomes like a play, guys. It becomes like a performance. And uh, it was quite emotional doing that because I was given life to kind of people that were inspired by my pals and people that, you know, went to Coatbridge High School, um, went to Erdrick Academy, you know. And it was a privilege to do that, you know, and lots of actors and, and quite famous people sometimes feed back to me that they've read the book, but they've also listened to the audio book and that they loved it, you know, and that I should try acting. I did it in the summer, it wasn't very good. Um, 
the eye. So when you, you know, there's there's a lot of avenues where you can take the written word, but it all starts way on the page. You know, whether it's a movie, whether it's a, a documentary, um, you know, and, and seeing the process of actually how the Young Team book is becoming a, a TV show that you'll be able to watch in the next few years is, is exciting. And again, it all starts with, with the written stuff, you know. Um, but aye guys, that's a wee crash course in the dialect and hopefully it, it made some sense. You know, it's a very important thing politically, morally. I think people like us are working class people should not um, feel lesser than other people. You know, you should be proud of where you come from. You should be proud of the voice and the language you've got. I won an award this year, Scots Book of the Year, for that very thing, for writing in dialect. And it was a, a great honour to win that, guys. And represent your Drinko Bridge up there. So, um, more soon, hopefully. Um, but guys, thank you very much for listening to my talk on dialect and the young team and I just want to say thank you to Cobridge High School. I was, I'm was a very proud former pupil and I owe much of my success in life to that school and I didn't have a very good experience at the academy, I got expelled obviously. Um, but the, the kindness and belief of some of the um, teachers and ex-teachers in that school um, help me have a much better life and um, I hope you all stick in um, because the stuff that you're learning and trying to avoid then determines um, a lot of the future for you and I know a lot of my pals wish they had stuck in you know in the Disney um, and it's harder to go back afterwards so guys I hope that's um, hope that's a wee crash course I will hopefully come back and speak to you about gangs and about all the, the themes of the young team that's about the language and the building blocks of it um, but that's another talk for another day. Um, but guys, be careful out there. There's a lot of trouble happening at the minute that we've all heard about, of course. So, um, and we're concerned about that. So look after yourselves, look after each other. Uh, be confident. And uh, thank you very much for having me.